Have you ever wanted to take your grid tied house and make it an off grid house where you don't have to worry about backup power or blackouts or bills for that matter. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how we did that out in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. First, we had to unload these solar panels that we propped up with these shovels so that way they didn't tilt over. We actually drove all the way from Idaho to Cape Cod for this job because this was a very special ground mount that we were using from Sinclair. This is the Skyrack 2.0. We're doing an above ground ground mount which is very uncommon. We have to use these special boxes that hold concrete and the posts in them, so that way you don't have to do any digging into the dirt. This works really well on flat ground or relatively flat ground, but I wouldn't recommend this on a hillside. A day one is very busy because there's a lot to get done, and the first thing we have to do is offload the trailer and get these boxes set up. Just by using an impact driver, we're able to put everything together very quickly and very easily. Next, it's a matter of getting the boxes set exactly where they belong. But you'll notice I'm wearing my pants pirate style, and that's because I happened to walk through some bushes and get snagged with some rusty hooks. That was no fun at all. Now we're slightly off with our measurement here with this box, so we have to pick it up. It's a little over 200 pounds. Moving it around is a little difficult, but we're gonna use this line here to get a nice straight edge to make sure that all the boxes are perfectly lined up. And you'll notice we're working on a slight hill and that's why we have to do a little bit of a tilt system here with this rack. And because we're gonna be securing these into concrete, we have to run rebar all the way through the bottoms of these posts. And we have to pre-dig where our conduits are gonna be because it's gonna be completely covered by concrete and we're not gonna be able to dig under it afterwards or even drill through it very easily. This H bracket here allows us to get the posts perfectly centered and set so that way when the concrete is poured it stays in place. Now just by using these large C clamps and using this Klein digital level we're able to get everything set exactly how it needs to be. I can't recommend this digital level enough. It tells us exactly what's going on and here's a completed view of the H bracket and how it's holding everything together. The yard that we're working on is on a slight hill and so we're going to match the tilt of the yard so that way it's exactly parallel to the ground. So that way the bottom edge of our solar panels are the exact same height all the way through from left to right. And then you can see we're off by a little bit here. We need to come up to 90 degrees for our post. If you have not used this pink fiberglass rebar before, it is very, very user friendly and only costs about 10% more than metal rebar. I highly recommend it. It's very lightweight, very flexible, and very easy to work with. I can't recommend it enough. We're gonna put in two rods of rebar here into the bottom to make sure that this post can never come out of the concrete. And cutting multiple pieces of rebar at once with the bandsaw is extremely easy. We're gonna use these small pieces as cross members against the other rebar, so that way it's even more rigid. Now we're facing a pretty tricky situation here because we have a small backyard and we're putting in 24 solar panels. We're going to get all of the posts and boxes completely preset and exactly where we need them to be. So that way, once we bring in the concrete, everything goes very smoothly and you can see everything is perfectly lined up here. Everything's touching just how we need. But in order for the concrete truck to reach the far boxes, we have to move these first two boxes out of the way. And man, these things hurt to move around. So I'm really glad that we have them and it makes this job a lot easier, but moving them around is tough. Now this is our junction box where we're going to be switching from solar wire or PV wire to THHN wire. It's also what's called a DC isolator or an IMO isolator, which simply means if we need to turn off power from the solar panels going to the solar generators, we can do that right here outside very safely. There's one major issue and that is concrete's on the way, but this basketball sized wasp nest, which has great black wasps in it, is not happy that we're trying to take it out. So we first try to cut a branch next to them, Thank thinking we might be able to just push the branch out of the way. You can see these guys are not messing around and this is a huge nest. But in the end, we decided these guys have got to go because it's directly in the path of where the concrete truck has to go. They're already stirring and not happy with us. Concrete arrived while we're trying to get this fixed and that's a problem because the concrete's already drying. So our plan is we're gonna soak this with foaming wasp spray so that they can't get out and hope that they just start dying. Unfortunately, that didn't really work, and the foam was getting so thick that the branch was actually starting to get weighed down and eventually started having foam flop off of it. And we're already starting to run out of wasp spray, and they are digging through the foam to try to get out. So we have to think very quickly. We grab this boat tarp, and we're gonna try to catch it and squash it.
And that didn't work. Cover it, cover it, cover it. I'm moving the ladder. So in a mad dash, and I don't know how nobody got stung, but everything worked out properly. We got this thing on the ground and smashed. The concrete truck ended up driving directly over the nest and squished all of the wasps. But you can see that if we had not done all of this, the concrete truck would have never been able to get the concrete to these boxes that are on the far end. We are behind schedule now and the concrete's already starting to dry, which is very bad. We have to move very quickly and get this concrete in the boxes as fast as possible. And it's just a matter of spreading it and getting it as smooth as possible, as fast as possible. Making sure that you get into all the nooks and crannies. That way it has a nice rigid setup once it's all done and hardened. We move these other two boxes back into place, got them filled up very quickly. And before things get too hard, we're trying to get these smoothed out so they have a nice clean finish. That was a very busy first day. And we're gonna go ahead and finish it off by digging this trench from the solar panel stands all the way to the house by hand. That way we make sure we don't hit any sprinkler lines or power lines or anything that's in the ground. Normally we would rent a ditch witch and something that would pull all this dirt out for us because we're usually going much longer distances. On day two, it's time to start pulling wire. So Kyle's prepping the wire to get attached to the mule tape and he's going to pre-pull it through our flexible metal conduit that you see there on the ground. While he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and get our string line pulled through and the easiest trick is to use a shop vac to pull that string with the bag on the end. And then to the string, we attach this mule tape, which is just webbing, but it's very strong. So you can pull really hard on it and it's not going to cut any holes in the conduit. Here we have our flexible metal conduit with our wires pre-run inside of it. And we've got it inside of the house. You have to have all of your wires encapsulated, meaning it has to be in conduit. And once you're in the basement, this is the easiest way we have found to run the wire. And luckily there's this cavity here where we can hide our flexible metal conduit. So that way, once the basement is finished, you won't even know that there's wires running through the ceiling for solar. Just by pulling on the mule tape, we get the wires all the way back outside quickly and easily by using some Got conduit it. lube and our mule tape. It's easy to get hung up on these 90 degree boxes here, but you can see we left excess wire here in case we ever need a little bit of wiggle room on either side of the wire. And buttoning this up makes it look nice and clean. Now it's time to get these frames off because the concrete is hard enough for us to work on and we're ready to get solar panels up. We want to keep these frames partially connected because we're hoping that that'll make it easier to drive all the way back to Idaho for the next job. Hopefully we're right about that. It is required and the best idea to make sure that your solar panels and your whole system is properly grounded by using this SDS Max hammer drill and the ground rod attachment you can very quickly drive this eight foot ground rod into the ground. At the very top of the post there are actually three different holes and that's in case there's any settling or movement when you're putting the posts in. It allows you to get these cross beams set up easily while keeping the whole system level. Now it's just a matter of having one person lift one side up, the other person slip in the bolt, and then slide the nut on so that way it can get properly balanced. And this movement and tilting action will come in very handy very soon. But once those are up, it's time to put on our trusses. The trusses is what the solar panels will actually clamp down to. So you have to make sure your posts are properly lined up so that way your trusses get bolted into the correct spot. And with this jack installed, it'll allow the homeowners to adjust the angle of the solar panels to maximize how much power they make at different times of the year. But we wanna make sure that our solar panels are nice and straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this string line along the bottom edge. So that way we can set the panels directly onto the string line. Once you have the bottom row of solar panels set, it's just as simple as sliding on the top row of solar panels and resting them on the lower row. So that way they match whatever the bottom row did. Now this is our IMO DC disconnect and we're wiring in our PV wires into the top. Basically what this means is that we're gonna be able to shut off our solar power with the flip of a switch. And all we have to do is make sure our PV outdoor rated wire is on top and our THHN indoor rated wire comes out the bottom. The THHN wire is much easier to pull through conduit. So this is a convenient place to switch the wire type. But inside, I'm simply going to extend these wires by adding MC4 connectors to the ends of the THHN wire. It's very important that before you pull your wires, you mark which ones go to which panels, such as the top row and the bottom row. You don't wanna mix that up. 
And now that our wires are run, I'm gonna go ahead and teach Matt here exactly how to put this whole system together. I wanna make sure he's familiar with the system so he can put it all together himself when he needs to. Now the Apollos come with these DC switches. They're very similar to the switch that we installed outside, but this is the option to turn it off inside. And now we're gonna set up the communication so that way these two units can be put into split phase mode. All of this is in the user manual and it's very easy to follow. And the battery cables, there's not really a wrong or a right way to do this. Simply go from a battery port on the Apollo to a battery port on the expansion battery. There's only one way to line them up. You simply press them on and twist the collar and it will lock into place. And then we add our blue labeled parallel cable. This is what allows the two units to share energy as well as give you split phase power. Every time I boot on one of the Apollos, I feel like I'm turning on a jet fighter from Top Gun and I love those buttons. I just wish they were on the front so it's easier to turn them on and off. Matt is going through the programming here to make sure that all the settings are set to how he would like them, including the unattended mode, which will allow the system to turn itself back on after fully discharging. You can also set the output to be single phase or split phase, and we're putting it in split phase right now because we're going to go ahead and get this house off grid. We've connected our split phase kit into these TT30 plugs on the front, and that goes directly to this generator inlet here. And now we're powering this electric heat pump water heater. All of the lights in the basement, there's no lights flickering, and even the fridge is working without any problems at all. The dehumidifier in the basement is keeping everything nice and dry. So if you're ever in the Cape Cod area, just know that there is a house living completely off grid using the High Solus Apollo solar generators, all installed by Minuteman Solar. If you're interested in having something like this, email me at info at minutemansolar.com.